Honestly, 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 right now, if you if you watch the fight, it is round three, two minutes and nine seconds, and I do not think that Jason Gavern is going to make it through this round. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to sit here, and even though I can't show you the fight right now, I'm going to sit here and wait for it to be over, and then we're going to talk. I am T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Live. We're live, yo. Listen, we're live. We're live. We're live. We're live. I'm about to cry. I'm literally about to listen. So what we're gonna do is um. We're going to wait for the post-fight interview from um, Anthony Joshua, who just improved to 11-0 with 11 KOs. Right now, it's April the 4th, 2015. I am T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Live, and I cover every single major fight live. And that's true. He did finish off Jason Gavern before, um, Gavern before uh, Deontay Wilder, but I covered that fight, and I know why, because Deontay Wilder was trying to do what Anthony Joshua wants to do with his next fight, Kevin Johnson. Um, Deontay Wilder wanted to get some rounds under his belt. Now, Jason Gavern, I put it this way. I like Jason Gavern. He's not, put it this way, he's an exciting journeyman. You know, he's got his whole Ric Flair woo thing going on. Big wrestling fan I hear. And um, also, um, uh, check out a friend of mine, uh, Baylor IC, who has an interview with Jason Gavern. And I know Jason Gavern from um, the Sky Sports tournament they had when he beat James Tony. Did he beat, I see, you know, it's crazy because I covered it. I covered so many fights, but I'm not even going to lie to you. Like, I be forgetting a lot of stuff and I be watching the fights. But I believe it was, um, I, I know, I know that's where I first saw him at. It was that tournament, that one night tournament. And he made it all the way until the last round. And I believe he fought Michael Sprott. But um, anyway, long story short, as we saw, he stopped, um, uh, he was stopped by Anthony Joshua. And man, this kid, man. Like, for one, it seems like he's getting bigger every fight. Now, I remember he started his career at about 230. Now, he's already six foot six and just full muscle. Now, he's like 6'6", six, six, 245. And I'm like, and then he's wearing these low ass, low ass um, John Stockton NBA shorts. And I'm like, yo, like, this dude it just keeps getting bigger. Pause. Like, and I'm talking about like this. And it's like, I, honestly, it's tough because, see, he's in a situation where I know what he's doing. I understand what he's doing as far as. As far as he's building up. Of course, he can compete with guys like Tyson Fury. He can compete with guys like Vladimir Klitschko. He can compete with guys like Deontay Wilder. But the point is, let him stay where he's at. Remember, remember, he hasn't even been a pro for two years yet. And he's been moving very... I'll put it this way. I like the path Eddie Hearn has him on. He's going to be ready for a title shot or a very big fight at the end of this year. Maybe not a title shot, but a big fight by the end of this year. When I say big fight, I'm talking about something like a, um, like um, I'm using I'm using names like Derek Chisora. I'm using names like a uh, like a David Price. I'm using I'm using names like you know I'm talking about as far as on that on, on that level, you know, like a level of an Antonio Tarver or someone like that. And I'm not saying these guys are big names, but you got to follow boxing and understand what I mean and understand you know as far as far as what I mean by the progression of me, I've covered um, nine of his last 11 fights now, Anthony Joshua, and sometime, maybe in 2016, 2017, I'm going to go to the UK specifically for him. So therefore, you know, he's growing as a boxer, I'm growing as a media reporter. So at one point in time, and it's, uh, I know, I know people don't like when I brag, but at one point in time, you know, it's going to be me right here. As far as YouTube is concerned, number one boxing reporter. And then it's going to be him. As far as, you know, one of the number one, he should be the number one heavyweight in the world by that time. Now, I cover heavyweight boxing extensively. So, oh, let's listen. Ah. Well, once we get that momentum going, I'll be able to display some more sharp shooting. But what got me through as well, I've been Scotland, Manchester, Liverpool, London. I have to say, Newcastle is right up there with the crowd. Thanks for all the support tonight as well. Were there weaknesses from your sparring session that you knew you could exploit? As I said, obviously, there's a lot of expectations. And Jason Gavin, very awkward opponent, slippy customer. He's there to make me look bad, and I think he did a good job of that. At the end of the day, I've got a job to do, and that's get a win. Hopefully, if I can start pushing to 
British titles, European, step by step. These fights don't really mean nothing when I'm experienced and I'm a champion. In commentary they said uh, you smashed the latter shot go when he was on the floor. Is that something that you need to work on uh, just to control yourself in the heat at the moment? You weren't on the floor, you was holding around my waist. Still, he can't so, do it. I think that he should have warned him that his low head. And then when he split us apart, that's when Jason Gavin let go of my waist and fell on the floor. Something you're conscious of then, that you're not doing. Bring in your promoter, Eddie, man. Eddie, it's May 30th next against King. Watch, watch, watch Eddie start saying some smooth ass shit. But listen, I can't play anymore. Um, because I got a lot of stuff going on. Um, a lot of videos to edit and all that stuff. Oh, it's a lot going on. But... Um, me being an extensive um, um, heavyweight fan, for example, I can tell you who all the major heavyweights is. The Tyson Furies, the uh, Steve Cunninghams, the Zara Glasscoffs, the, um, of course I said, Dale Tesor, Joseph Parker, Lucas Brown, um, Antonio Tarver, Malik Scott, Brian Jennings, uh, Vladimir, Dr. Steele, uh, Hammer Klitschko. And I know people are saying, well, you're missing this guy, you're missing this guy. Listen, I cover heavyweight boxing. My videos here prove it. In fact, I'm just an overall boxing fan. I love the sport. I love the sweet science. But let's hear what AJ has to say if he has to say anything else again. Jason Gavin was a defensive puzzle to unfold, um, but I slowly broke him down. Same with Kevin Kimpin Johnson. That's the beautiful thing about the professionals, is that oh, there's here. two sides of the fight. We got the first six, and we got the second six, or the first five and the second fight. So one way or another, they're gonna get broken down, whether it's in the first quarter or the second quarter. So I just gotta stay behind my jab, stay loose, start chopping down that tree, and hopefully I'll get another stoppage in my record. Great to have you back. Anthony Joshua gets the win, but sounds a little frustrated. I think he is, you know, he's... he's he wants to do everything absolutely precise. That's a sort of he's a perfectionist. Yeah, you know, um, yeah, I, I noticed. I noticed that. But overall, I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, I know you're probably going to like, act like, uh, like not like my language, but you know, he fucked Jason Gabbard up. So you know, I understand he wants to look pretty and everything, but he's a little too hard on himself. And, and you got to think, people are looking at you know, just like he was manhandling him, and also like he's saying Jason Gabbard made him you know look bad. No, you did like. You're like maybe maybe he, you know, he's a perfectionist, I guess, as they're saying. But um, Kevin Johnson is next. Kevin Johnson has never been stopped before, and um, I'm excited to see him versus Kevin Johnson. Why is because, like I said, like when you're going up this route as as Anthony Joshua, anybody coming up that um like like that way, just like an Archer Berta PF who who um I watched earlier today, I want to see them go the rounds. Me as a boxing fan watching all these fights, I don't care. Put it, put it this way. Put it this way. You can be a Deontay Wilder with uh with uh 33 um 33 no at that point in time 32 wins with 32 KOs. You can be a guy knocking out everybody in the 11th round, but I will never I will never fully put my faith in you until I see you go to distance. I want to see how you look going 12. You know, and I want to see that from Anthony Joshua against a guy like um against a guy like Kevin Johnson. And if you don't know Anthony Joshua has been fighting guys like Kevin Johnson and Jason Gavern before bigger name guys like a Tyson Fury and uh, Deontay Wilder for them, if you get what I'm saying. So, you know, like he, he's on he's on a, a somewhat accelerated path in, in, in a way. But at the same time, he's he's like the risk he's taking. Well, it's not risk because. These guys he's fighting, he could beat these guys, and it should be respected that he's taking these fights this early in his career. But like I said, you gotta watch all boxing and you and you gotta understand. Um, I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm Tissue Controversy. This is Tissue Controversy Live. Follow me on uh Twitter, Tissue Controversy on Facebook, Tissue Controversy with Real Combat Media.com. Shout out to Spencer Farrer and Sky Sports uh Toto Podcast. This is Tissue Controversy, Tissue Controversy Live.